So here's the thing. I was initially planning to put out a video on Sakura Quest, and then I remembered Hiroaka has a new OP out. So yeah, that's on hold till next week, but be on the lookout for that one. Anyway, enough delaying the inevitable, let's get right into analyzing and comparing the third OP of Boku no Hero Academia. Enjoy. So what originally compelled me to make my first video comparing the OPs was the immediate contrast between the opening seconds of each and how they depict the relationship between Deku and All Might. In the first, he's visibly awestruck by the presence of his hero, whereas by the second OP, his face bears a confident smile. They are also both now framed by a real, tangible setting, as opposed to the dreamscape-like environment of the first season. And now with the beginning of the third OP, I'm even more confident in my previous analysis. They are giving us a clear narrative thread to follow and I love it. So let's jump right in. We start on Deku as he punches away a layer of dust revealing the sky as he turns to greet All Might. Even in these first few seconds I notice some distinct differences. In the first OP All Might has his back to Deku, only just starting to turn at the very end. Meanwhile, in the second, it's a clear side profile shot as he leaps through the city. And now finally, we have Deku turning to meet All Might face to face. Not only that, but if Deku hadn't turned, their staging would have actually been the exact opposite of what it was in Season 1. It's a very clear progression that we're being shown. Also, remember what I said about facial expressions? Look at that ferocity and readiness. He hasn't quite got the smile down yet, but if I didn't know any better, I'd assume he's about to turn to face down a villain. As the shot continues, we see All Might land, his cape lingering for a few moments before falling and bathing Deku in sunlight. Everything about these opening shots is suggesting to me that the time is coming for Deku to step out of All Might's shadow and take his place as the symbol of peace. Even the color design in each of these opening scenes paints this picture for me. At first we see that Deku is enveloped by this golden light that is characteristic of All Might. In the second opening, that's gone in place of natural lighting and colors, again suggesting that his impossible dream is now tangible. And finally, in this third installment, the opening shots are now tinted with his color palette. He's starting to shine on his own. Even if he's not completely out of All Might's shadow yet, he is learning to be his own hero instead of just an imitation. And this idea is also reflected in Deku's badass new hero costume, which is a far cry away from its All Might-inspired origins. Anyways, I think I've sufficiently conveyed my love for these opening shots of each OP, especially when compared, so let's move on. We next see the pair smiling at each other before they embrace as Deku triggers one for all and punches his way to the title card. The song continues on for a bit as we then cut to All Might overlooking a cityscape for a good chunk of time. Gran Torino then fades in as we jump to nighttime and we're shown what appears to be the previous wielder of one for all. This quick transition from day to night after holding on him for almost 10 seconds is symbolic of the lack of time Deku has to succeed All Might. He's such a big force in this world, but his time as the symbol of peace could be over at a moment's notice. These shots also hint at something we learn in this first episode of the second half of Season 2, that All Might's predecessor was unable to train him because he had just passed away. So there's definitely some interesting parallels that get highlighted here. Next, we see Deku and Todoroki appear in what ends up being a silhouette of Ida, who then takes swarm from said silhouette as he faces the camera with a stern expression on his face and Tensei reflected in his glasses. In this arc, Ida is out to avenge his brother, and while he feels that he must do this on his own, the previous shot tells us that, whether he knows it or not, his friends will be there for him. Yes, metaphorically, but also quite literally if the part with them confronting the hero killer Stain later in the OP is anything to go by. Also, this shot, as well as the ones that follow immediately after, are the first from any OP so far that give us a significant look into the motivations of characters outside Deku. Sure, we had the stretching scenes in the last OP, but they all shared the same goal of wanting to win the sports festival. Not digging too deep there. Now Ida's out for revenge, Ochako and Momo are both dealing with their disappointment after losing in the tournament, and Bakugo is still angered by the times Deku made him feel weak. But hey, at least he appears to be over Todoroki giving him nothing but the cold shoulder in the finals. Good for him. After this, we transition into those shots of the trio seemingly battling Stain that I mentioned earlier. There isn't much to break apart here. Each of them are displaying their quirks, although it is noteworthy to see Todoroki using his fire and Deku effortlessly leaping through the alley. All in all, a few solid action shots. 
Next, we get a quick pan showing us Shigaraki and Kurogiri. Again, there's not a ton here, but you will probably notice these several silhouettes next to and behind them. If you've read the manga, well, you know who they are, so no spoilers, but it is an indication that Shigaraki's supposed League of Villains is expanding. The shots immediately following this are pretty simple, but when you take them in context with the audio from the song, I think they become very significant. We see that Deku appears to be confronting Shigaraki, and in time with the cuts, we hear the singer repeating a phrase that roughly translates to, it's inevitable. And this isn't the first time in the OP that we actually hear this line. Rewind back to the beginning, and we also hear it when Deku and All Might are smiling at each other. There's a sense of duality with this statement that I can only read as intentional when it's paired with these visuals. Deku taking All Might's place as the symbol of peace is going to happen, he told us as much back in episode 2, and while that's exciting and he's embracing this chance, being a hero is a double-edged sword. What comes with it is inevitable confrontations with villains like Shigaraki, people who will want to take him down for who he is and what he represents. I think this is a fantastic contrast and is honestly one of my favorite parts of the entire OP. Next, we see a short shot of All Might in his classic pose and setting. It provides some good juxtaposition for the previous shots. We then quickly transition in time to see him flex before the camera pans out to show all of UA's faculty. Nothing too substantial here. Next, we get the roll call shots for Class 1A that are standard for an anime with a cast of this size. But there is still significance in the fact that everyone at least has some animation to them. It's a clear step up from the quick panel shots they got in the first OP, and the group lineup in the second were only a few moves. Also, without spoiling it, in this last bit there are some hints as to what will follow the Stain arc. So that's cool to see, and it makes me happy because I think that means this second half of the season should continue to have solid pacing. Anyways, we end on Bakugo blasting his way through a cityscape as he lunges at what is inferred to be Deku. But as we zoom out, we see that he doesn't appear to be concerned with him. We're back in the environment we saw at the beginning, and the scene is once again tinted to his palette as he lines up for the end card group shot. On that note, even in this last image, where there's no animation, nothing's happening, there is significance. Going back to the shots of Ochako, Momo, and Bakugo, if we look closely, we can see they're panning along something in the background. I believe it's this giant wall that we can see has Plus Ultra scrawled across it. The texture seems to be the same, and if you think about it for a second, it makes perfect sense. This wall is the physical representation of what it means to go beyond. Plus, Ultra is no longer some hollow phrase they can just rattle off because it sounds cool. In order to embody that idea, they need to push past their failures and learn from them. Make their best effort today look like their worst tomorrow. All of this beautifully summed up in a few shots given some context. And yeah, that about sums up my analysis of Boku no Hero Academia's third OP. I think visually, it might be my favorite. It definitely felt like there was plenty to unpack in that regard, so much so that I probably missed some stuff. Oh, oh, I almost forgot the song. As far as the song is concerned, meh. Okay, it, it's not bad. It's pretty catchy, actually. This is the best song of all time. No, in all seriousness, I do like the song. I had to listen to it a few times to get Peace Sign out of my head, but it's an enjoyable tune. I don't know if I like it more than the last one, but I do think the song is better when it's accompanied by the visuals. Whereas I think I could listen to the Day or Peace Sign on their own, I definitely prefer this third song with its OP. But that is just my personal preference, and these are just my opinions. You, being a different person, I hope, probably have different ones, and I'd love to hear them. What's your favorite OP so far visually? What about the song? Whether you're answering these questions or giving me a suggestion for what to cover next, I look forward to reading it down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to leave a like. You can follow me on Twitter if you ever want to chat or hear occasional ramblings. It's also the best place to get updates on my channel. You can click over here on the left to subscribe, but if I've yet to convince you, feel free to check out some of my other content on the right. I'll see you next time.